Ben, my guy, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing all right. I'm yeah. just chilling at home for now. <laughs> yeah, what you what you been doing at home? Um, well, I got here about a week ago. Had a bunch of stuff to like unpack and um just going through a lot of my stuff here. Um, so lots of like reorganizing and cleaning stuff out. Um, I've been doing some like trying to be productive during the day. You know, I've been making stuff, making some art, um, trying to put myself out there, maybe get some freelance jobs, but nothing really so far for the most part. I'm kind of just chilling. Wow. Dang. So you think you want to go freelance for the, for your, your main thing? Is that the um, direction you're thinking you're going in? I'm going to try it out. Like, I don't know if it can really work out. Like just starting freelance right out of college. Um, it's just kind of an experiment right now, I guess. You know, I'm at home with my parents now, not paying rent. So um, <laughs> now's the time to do it. Oh, yeah, for sure. And even if I move back to Peoria, which I probably will do, um, it's, you know, not too expensive to live there. And I might get like a either another job or maybe I will look for like a full time, you know, animation job or something. But I feel like it's just kind of hard right now to get a job and oh yeah, not a lot of people are hiring and a lot of it's remote anyway. A lot of it is remote. That is correct. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, that's so true that you like while you're at home, I, I love that whole statement of like, you know, you, you might as well do it while you're at home. I feel like a lot of people like they want to play such a safe route and it's like at this time when we're, we're just so young it's like, why mm -hmm. would you, like, I don't want like to... Now, now's the yeah. time to take risks, I guess, is how right, I'm thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, right now, and not when you're, like, a lot of people don't take risks. I mean, they they realize they want to do that when they're, like, I feel like in their 40s or 50s, and then it's, <laughs> there's not... Yeah, but by I mean, then, you know. <laughs> yeah, there, there's still a chance to do that, it's just not as, not as easy. And if you, I mean, you just gotta fail. You just gotta yeah. fail early on. I also feel like I'm young enough to be naive that yeah. <laughs> like I can uh, like go do something cool and kind of follow my own path. Cause For I, sure. yeah, I guess I still kind of believe in that and hopefully it'll work out. You know, people do it. Absolutely, I just, um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a recent thing, I guess. Um, like I, I've done a few freelance projects before uh, just from like people that I've met mostly out in LA when I did the semester out there. Um, I got some work from that and so I guess it kind of like came to me and I realized I like doing it um but now you know people's budgets are kind of tight like I actually I actually talked to someone who wanted a music video because like live action shoots got canceled but then she's like oh my sister lost her job because of COVID so I'm helping her out financially and um not really looking to spend money on a music video anymore so oh everything's kind of up in the air <laughs> yeah man I, I realized, I, I noticed um, near the end here, near the end of our studies, that you started looking at some entrepreneurship classes that you were taking, that also I was taking. Was that, at, yeah. at any point, is that kind of like a route you're thinking of maybe, like working for yourself at some point? Yeah, I think so. I only took one class, um, and it was sort of what I expected, but not really, I guess. Right. Was um, it the creativity one? Yeah, entrepreneurial creativity. Gotcha. It was yeah. cool. I'm glad I took it. Um, I definitely learned things, even though um, I guess my effort in the class could have been a bit better. I was I was just so focused on capstone pretty much this whole year. I guess like sometimes my other classes got you know pushed way out of the way. But right. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's. I'm not too far out of college, obviously, but kind of reflecting on it, I think taking like one or two classes in kind of different areas um you know i like learn things but it's also just about kind of like being around other people that take those classes yeah, and like what they sure. think about and the professors and stuff too which is um i guess i'm pretty happy i didn't take a minor i guess because i got to kind of bounce around to different areas like that and take like one or two classes in different areas instead of having like a main secondary focus yeah what so then what do you think 
was the most important class you took in college that didn't pertain to your main profession? Most important class. The most important class you took that wasn't animation related, I guess, because you're, you know, an animation major. Yeah. Um Well, when you say important, you mean like is going to help me in my career or I would say if you're asking about most valuable class, I would honestly say astronomy because just because it really piqued my interest in it and I thought it was really cool. And now, um, like, I don't really have any, like, practical use for astronomy knowledge, but it's just cool to, like, know stuff, like, about, uh, like, the phases of the moon and the planets and all the constellations and stuff. <laughs> um, and that's, like, pretty far out of my major. Uh, yeah. It's just, like, to fill the science credit. So I guess just a, for, like, personal value, I'm really glad I took that class. Um, but professionally, I guess, um, it might be the entrepreneurship class actually, because hmm. yeah, you asked if I was thinking about working for myself and I think so. I think I did pretty good about that last summer when I made the music video Oh yeah, and, um, then just, you know, doing a solo capstone project. I think I worked pretty well by myself. Don't, don't get too lonely sometimes. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Cool. Um, do you think you'd, I guess, do, do you see yourself making like, just like a complete, because you're technically working for yourself when you're making a music video, but ultimately, I guess you're still answering to, so someone who's like paying you but would you ever do like a this is a ben panfill movie like does that yeah yeah um and that would be cool like that would be probably ideal i guess what? um what, what is was that yeah sorry <laughs> what is the ben the ben panfill movie if i gave if i if i gave you a million dollars right now to make a movie to if make it, a movie? Yeah, what would you, what would your movie be about? Um animated feature. Go. <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um I probably want to have something with like um probably some sort of like social impact, I guess. It's hard to not think about like politics and just like the world globally right now cuz it's all kind of you know, with COVID, kind of everyone was on the same page with that. And then now all like the protests and stuff. Right. I feel like there's just so much change happening. And I would want to like, I don't know, I guess just kind of like get my voice out there. I feel like a lot of people, I feel like everything is very divided right now. And yeah, you know, sure. I definitely, I definitely like take sides on the issues, but I would still want to make something that would bring people together. So if that would just be like, um, hmm, I think I would want to tell like a, probably like a true story. I like, um, cause like for my senior project, I did something very like random, like not human at all. And I think that was kind of like the thing that I missed most about like doing that experience, you know, like all year, it was really cool to like be imaginative and do weird stuff. Um, but I did miss kind of like telling a more like relatable story, I guess. Right. So as far as specifics, um, talking about your, uh, what was your movie called again? It was called Demiurge. I stole your poster and I still don't remember. Demiurge link in the description. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. Or wait, what did you say? I said the links in the description. <laughs> to, uh, oh, okay, cool. People want to give it a watch. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, I guess maybe I would try to tell something personal. I guess, like maybe like a. Um, I feel like I'm too young now, but after maybe I've lived some life, yeah, I want to share like my perspective because I feel like, um. I feel like I kind of have a unique perspective, I guess, in the entertainment world coming from such like a small town, I guess. And I didn't really realize until after I left how much that probably like impacted me and like the way I think about things. For sure, man. Um, I, I'd really like to dive into that, I guess, kind of make it personal. Um, 
beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> that's feature nah, that's film all good. is something I haven't really thought about, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, I hit you with the with the big one right off the bat, but I've always just been curious. I think, yeah, I think you do have a unique perspective. And I do love the one thing I loved about our department is I would always ask people like what they would want to make and what kind of projects they want to work on because everyone has a different take on something. Yeah. I mean, even though like we we have all of these like blockbuster like Marvel movies coming out and everything's kind of homogenized, people could still everyone and everyone can make their own like superhero movie and it wouldn't be exactly the same. There'd be different variations of it and I think that's just it's pretty neat. True, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Sorry, I hit you with the yeah. big one right off the bat, but like, what else? What else you've been doing, man? You've been—I know you're you're uh, a big music guy. You, what's your latest uh, jam right now? My uh, my jam, like what I'm listening to or what I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, damn. I, I I meant what you're listening to, but what I'm listening to. Um, I've been kind of diving back into, uh, kind of what I used to listen to a couple of years ago, I did this project with a friend where we uh, ranked our top 20 albums of the last 20 years. So I like really like dove into my music tastes um, oh, wow. about like what albums have been most influential on me and stuff and kind of like made playlists by those. So I've been listening to those some, um, some, some of my favorite artists, Queen of the, Queens of the Stone Age, right. uh, Radiohead, Tame Impala, Gojira, <laughs> um slow dive um what else cage the elephant yeah man yeah the list goes on so what were your what were your top three top three albums so my top three were um number three was lonerism by tame impala uh number two was the way of all flesh by gojira and number one was songs for the deaf by queens of the stone age so Nice. I got some like variation there. Are you yeah, familiar man. with all all three of those? Uh, I know songs of the deaf. Okay. Uh, what were the other two? <laughs> uh, so Tame Impala. Tame Impala is pretty big. You've I know heard Tame of... Impala. Yeah, for sure. You showed yeah. me that. I'm pretty. Yeah, they're like psychedelic rock. Uh, kind of leaning more into like pop now, I guess. Kind of more like his newest album is a little bit more like like dance floor kind of electronic. And his album before that, Currents, was a little bit more in that direction too. Mm. Um, but yeah, I chose Lonerism, which is more like rock, like kind of psychedelic, trippy. Um, is that still like the, pop? I guess. Yeah. Is that their older stuff? Yeah. So he's got four albums now, and that's his second album. So I almost put the first album because um, it's kind of it's kind of been a progression more from like the sounding like a clone of like the Beatles and other like. 60s era like kind of psychedelic bands uh transitioning that to like a more modern sound um so yeah his first two albums are my favorite okay and yeah then the second one was gojira gojira is kind of unique they're a french metal band um their songs are in english they're um they don't sing in french but <laughs> yeah they're like I don't know what metal subgenre I'd call them. I guess maybe like death metal, but they sing a lot about like the environment and that album specifically is more about like mortality and death and stuff. Um, but they're kind of famous for like kind of being hippies and singing about like how we're messing up the planet. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's a lot of their subject matter. And yeah, you said, you know, songs for the deaf. Oh yeah. Yeah, Queens of the Stone Age, probably my favorite band or most influential, I guess, on my taste. Yeah, and... I remember when we first met. I think you're talking about them quite often. Oh, did we talk about that when we first met? <laughs> oh yeah, the first, yeah. um, the first thing I guess we can tell re recount the story of I met our yeah. good our good friend Jake Velliser at an orientation mm -hmm. for for our college. And we signed up to be roommates, Jake and I. Uh, a few months passed by, we get our roommate assignments, and even though we requested it, we just weren't. And so I got, we were going to be roommates. And Jake's like, well, we got we to gotta fix this. We got to figure this out. And I'm just kind of going with the flow. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think this is going to pan out. So I just start texting, <laughs> I start texting you. That's where we kind of get like the, that's where I kind of get a feel for Oh, what are your tastes? What kind of bands right, do you like? Yeah. 
and everything like that. We had a little text chain. I was like, yay, oh, yeah, pizza rolls and smash. And I was like, oh, this is going to be the best. And Jake's like. <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember. I remember you asked me about pizza rolls in like, your first text. <laughs> pizza rolls and smash this is going to be awesome. Jake's like, hey, Warren, can we figure this out? I'm like, I don't know, man. And then I was like, all yeah. right, I guess I should send an email. And then it took one email. And it was like, oh, yeah, sorry, we messed yeah. that up. We'll pair you back up with uh, we'll pair you back up with Jake. And I was like, oh, man. My uh, my side piece roommate isn't gonna be happy about this. <laughs> so <laughs> you kind of cut out there. What did you say? Oh, I I called you a side piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, saying. <laughs> yeah. Then I was like all by myself, and I think I would have had the room to myself if I wouldn't have requested a roommate. Which, in hindsight, I would have just taken the room to myself. Um. But, you know, oh, being a freshman, awesome. I wanted to, like, meet someone new and stuff. Right, yeah. So then I got paired up with someone that, like, I didn't really have much in common with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your roommate was pretty cool. You, you had that massive room, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I had, like, the biggest big. room in the building. <laughs> it was it was in the basement behind a bush, so we got no natural light, and it kind of felt like a dungeon. But <laughs> it was the biggest room. Oh, that's and... right. You are in the basement or something, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Basement of U-Haul um yeah but then i remember like after after all that got sorted out i remember like i still texted you i was like hey i'm still down to meet up you know just trying to like you know meet as many people as possible and i had you know made a few connections before that like at orientation i had some friends and stuff but you know i went to college and didn't know anyone which i think you're kind of the same way right like no one from your high school went here oh yeah no one people i barely know anyone from my high school went to college so yeah, it was just, mm-hmm. it was me, and I was desperately like, oh, okay, trying to, trying to, trying to make friends early on here. Yeah, so I ended up meeting up with you, and then you were with Jake. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I had met Jake before, <laughs> but Jake doesn't really remember this, but Wait. we were at the same visit day once. Oh, I didn't even know this. Yeah, yeah, we did like a overnight visit. It was like a, for only out-of-state students or something, you like went and stayed in a dorm for a night. Oh, and... I did, I did that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Oh, maybe it wasn't out of state then. Or maybe just mine was, like, that specific one. It could have been, yeah. But I remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I really talked to Jake much, but we were, like, I think we, like, stayed on the same floor that night. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, Jake and I's orientation. <laughs> we just... <laughs> I'll probably talk about it with them when I record the episode with them, but we just... We met with these people who are just like pretty obviously like not nice people. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were just kind of, I don't know. They're like fresh out of high school and still kind of had that, that same brain space. And I just remember yeah. like, I did not want to go there. They wanted to go Pokemon going. And I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to do this. And then Jake was <laughs> like, Oh yeah, we should, we should go, man. And I was like, Oh crap. And we went out with them. And this was, you know, before we went to school, I had no clue where we were. I think we were, we were basically like by the GCC or something. And I was like, where the hell are we? I have no clue where we are. It's like, <laughs> meanwhile, our hall was like Lovelace or whatever. So it's literally like right there. Yeah. And I'm like, we're so lost. I don't know where we're going. But I mean, you know, it worked out. I still have a recording of that. I should put that. I have a recording of us, of me and Jake talking to these people. It's uh, it's some some interesting stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be good to look back on. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For sure, my. Doesn't that seem like so long ago? Oh yeah, dude. Like, end of college seems like forever ago. Yeah. Back when we were true, at the too. house, man. What'd you say? I said back when we were at the house. That seems like back at the house. Ago. Yeah. Well, well I've I mean, been out of the house. <laughs> yeah, for that's like right. Eight days now. <laughs> that's right. I I think I left in March, so it actually has been a while for me. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, that house was something. Oh yeah, we had the uh, <laughs> we had someone placing babies everywhere. <laughs> we had yeah. uh, an engineer slash programmer's entire history in our garage. Yeah, yeah, all those like important documents, like is uh passports and trips to china tickets <laughs> that was fantastic 
That was a great night, actually, when that we went through that box. Great and, like... night. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was just me and you, because I think, I, I don't know, you might have been gone, but me, when we first found that box, I think Jake, Leah, and I, like, sk- we merely skimmed the surface of the conspiracy. And then they mm-hmm. put they put it away because they're sane people. They're like, okay, we have lives <laughs> that we needed to attend to, so we can just leave this box here. I didn't have anything going on, so I'm like, what does this guy do? What is yeah, same. <laughs> I get really nosy about that stuff. <laughs> and then, yeah, I remember that. That was me and you. We sat down and we mapped out this guy's life, and I <laughs> I found, I think you you found a bunch of pictures right at first and a bunch of documents. I found letters to multiple women. That's right. Love yeah. letters. <laughs> and then you found the, the one doc that uh, that explained it all. Yeah, I remember we were like trying to piece it together. We were like, well, we found those letters to like multiple wives or something. <laughs> yeah. And then like newspaper clippings of um, like murders that took place. Oh, and yeah. And traced that back to like a block from where he lived. <laughs> and we're like, what is going on? <laughs> and I don't know. Did we ever, we never really figured that, that part out, did we? No. Um, but then there was like the trips to China and stuff. But yeah, yeah, then I just remember I found this letter that just explains that he was married, went to China, fell in love with his interpreter while he was there for work, married her while he was in China, and then like tried to bring her back to the U.S. But the marriage wasn't valid or something because because uh, he was already married in the u.s <laughs> something wild so and it's just crazy. like documents they just left behind in this garage and no one cleared it out before we moved in yep and then i stalked him even more found <laughs> contact info of his sister which i think you found in a yearbook or something called oh yeah google i googled her name and a state farm popped up and i called the state farm that she worked at <laughs> and she was like she was doing her normal shtick like oh it's state farm how can we help you and i was like your brother left his stuff in our garage <laughs> she's like what i'm like oh yeah um you know uh jim jim left his stuff here and she went she paused and she went oh yeah i'll uh i'll call him and have him get in contact with you i don't know if she was disappointed or like struck a nerve with her but yeah Probably and just then like yeah. i mean i got the like if he just like left all that stuff he said that he wanted it to be like thrown away or something right like when you talk to him or something like he thought like he hired someone to go bring it to a junk pile or something well actually the he hired people to move it onto his truck so he could take it take it oh. with him and they told him that yeah we had we got everything everything's on there so he just oh. went and they totally forgot his cap and gown Mm-hmm. His wife's clothes, a Bible, a map of his murders. Yeah, it was yearbooks. His yearbooks, uh, yeah. Plans for either an airplane or a crossbow. <laughs> That's so right. <laughs> Depending on how you interpret the drawing. That's so right. It was so an airplane. That was so funny. I I, yeah. I remember messaging Leah. That was right after we had the meet. I remember messaging Leah like, Leah, we have it all. We have it. Uh, there's people. There are people murdered in Orange County. And she goes, were they murdered by a crossbow? <laughs> I'm like, Leah, I don't think it's a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, we had crazy adventures in that house, man. Yeah. It seems like we it were was... there longer than we were, I feel like. Well, we were there for the summer, right? You were That's there all true. summer too, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the longest place, longest I've ever lived in one place besides, like, here where I grew up. I heard it was a year in that house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, you've been in there even longer. So I dipped out. Yeah, I mean I was, yeah, I was pretty much there since our lease started June first last year to uh, I think I moved out was it the thirtieth of May. So pretty much a solid year I lived there. <laughs> did you uh did you leave anything for the next people? Uh I did. I left I left the babies. <laughs> oh, nice. The little, the little plastic Yeah, babies. they're plastic. Uh, we should probably clarify that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were no real babies harmed in me leaving the house. Um, I was going to leave. I was going to leave more stuff, actually, um, as, like, gifts. 
to the new tenants because like I didn't want it but like my family came and were helping helping me pack up and everything just got a, got put in our car so now I still have it but I was gonna leave them like a poster you remember the dank poster oh yeah yeah I made this poster at an internship and it's just like it was for like a for like a sketch about someone throwing a party or I don't know. Oh, they, those are they, amazing. They didn't tell me the full story, but <laughs> it was just like a poster that said dank on it and had like weed puns. <laughs> I was going to leave them that. Nice. And uh, something else I thought I left too, or was going to leave. Um, chairs that like Eddie found in the trash or something. Chairs <laughs> in the trash. Got those. Wow. I thought, yeah, oh, I thought the, he said, oh, like, the GCC was just throwing them out. That's right, the computer chairs. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the janitor was a very nice lady, and she was like, hey, we're going to throw these out, but if I'm going to leave them in the hall, and if they disappeared, like, that, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't really care. And we are like, whoa. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that's how that went down. <laughs> yeah, because they were replacing all the bad furniture in there with even worse furniture. Yeah. Because it was basically... I mean, I, maybe it's better, we'll see, but the fact of the matter is, was that the old furniture was, even though it was bad, it was broken in. Then a bunch of new couches and stuff come in, and they got oh, no, yeah. they got complete butt resistance. Um, I heard I feel, that, yeah, what's up? Oh, I was just gonna say, I feel like things, like, decisions like that to replace, like, perfectly good chairs, Bradley's gotta be, like, hitting themselves over the head right now because <laughs> they're they gotta be so tight on budget after like all this has happened and stuff oh my god and gosh. they're like wow we didn't need that and also the giant new building <laughs> like, yeah man maybe that was a little bit of a a stretch of the might dollar have, might have over not <laughs> necessary <laughs> yeah unless they you know there's some like weird like costco bundle like <laughs> bajillion shares so like oh let's throw the gcc ones out can you imagine maybe. i don't know I was talking with this, I think, with Jake the other day. Can you imagine being the new president of Bradley? I know. Being sworn in. Is he... Yeah. Is he full president? I heard they were doing, like, a joint presidency for a little bit. I think that's... Oh, I think that was in May. I, okay. I'm pretty sure it's over, but I'm I'm not 100% on that. This has got to be the worst way to take over a university of all time. <laughs> We don't have budget, so you're probably gonna have to cut some professors. And uh, the, the apocalypse is starting. Yeah. And um, we have new furniture, so. But we have a brand new building. Yeah, we have a brand new building. We don't have any staff to put in it. We cut, we, or uh, like classes in it, because everything's remote. But you know. <laughs> man, they're they're saying fall fall 2020, man. Yeah. Have you heard what they're doing? No. So um, I think a lot of schools are doing this because my sister's school is doing it too, but they they cancel fall break and then you don't go back after Thanksgiving. So there's no like going back and forth during the semester. You just go and like they're doing in-person classes like from August up until Thanksgiving, but like no breaks like in between to cut down on, I guess, transporting. Um, and then like finals will just be all online. Oh wow. Yeah. I guess it makes sense. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be a while before someone recreates the magic that was <laughs> actually being at school. Yeah. Who knows? It's kinda crazy to think. Yeah, maybe we're the last ones. <laughs> That, wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna tell our our kids and our grandkids about like yo we used to they used to have giant buildings and everyone, <laughs> yeah. would, everyone would go into the same ones. No, I thought about that all the time. Like um, when everyone left, you know, because I came back and I lived there. Like I came home for spring break for a little bit, and then I went back and like stayed there through the rest of the semester. But campus was like how it was in the summer; it was just empty. So just like these giant buildings, and then just like me walking around an empty campus or driving through an empty campus and i thought about that kind of stuff i was like will these buildings like ever be put to their use again and i think they will i I don't think it's like yeah i mean you don't really know but it sounds like things are going to get back to normal eventually you'd hope yeah i think things are cooling down 
But there was, yeah, there was a bit of a bit of a scare there for a second. Yeah, and you know, yeah, people are like over it here already, and lots of places. Oh, I'm sure. Like, yeah. Um. Yeah, coming from Illinois to Iowa was a pretty big. I mean, I think Illinois has opened up a little bit more now, but like they were still pretty locked down until June started. And when I moved home at like the end of May, we like crossed the Iowa border. And then my sister's like, oh, let's just like go get a burrito and you can just like go into a restaurant. And I'm like, wow, I haven't done this in months. <laughs> wow, man. Did you go, did you go inside? Yeah, and I don't think masks are required. It's just. Wow. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, we tried, you know. We tried. <laughs> yeah, we tried. We tried to be sanitary. Yeah. So I, some stuff's like permanently changed, though, I think. Yeah. I'm... I was you know, like buffets. Buffets will never be a thing again, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Which breaks my heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. Buffets. Yeah, if you think about it, it's probably not. I remember going yeah. to buffets and looking at the... You, you ever go to a buffet where there was, like, the fountain of the chocolate, like, spewing out at the top and people oh, could, yeah. like, dip stuff in it? <laughs> that just seems yeah. like so much collateral damage. <laughs> I know. Like, when you think about it now, you know, even, like, looking back on it, you're like, wow, we were just, like, okay with that before? Like, there were still germs before this. But... Right, yeah. Yeah, I went... I got a haircut today. Which which blew kind of blew my mind because I I remember oh, yeah. being like when the pandemic started my hair was already super long, and mm -hmm. today it was just it was over my eyes completely and I was like okay yep. I gotta go get this that's kind of where I'm at too I need to get one like this week, <laughs> and the the lady I was talking to when I was getting a haircut was like oh yeah you know we because of COVID we take a lot of um a lot of uh, sanitary measures to keep it clean and stuff and I'm like are you implying that you didn't beforehand <laughs> like, what, right, yeah. like saying stuff like that like oh yeah we're trying to be clean because you know the pandemic and not because i don't know we're an advanced race i'd like to think <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really exposed a lot it, it really has just like stuff like that and even like bigger things like organizational stuff like government and people that are um just I don't know, just like so resistant to, you know, like making me wear a mask in public is tyranny, even if it's like for the greater good. And a lot of that stuff is just right. kind of like being brought to light right now. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty wild. Weird times. This guy, uh, I was at Walmart the other day and uh, this guy in front of me wasn't wearing a mask. Uh, he kept turning around looking at me and uh I've been on the Metro a lot, the St. Louis Metro a lot, so I'm like, you know, oh. I'm like, this is the punk test. This guy, this guy might try to mug me right now, right in the middle of Walmart, but he, he, kept, he keeps turning around, so I back up because I'm thinking, like, maybe he wants to do social distancing. I don't know. He has the mask. He sees I back up, and he moves in closer, and he goes, <laughs> he goes, you know, uh, COVID is um, a chemical in the airplanes. And I go, uh, oh, it is? And he goes, yes. And then he just walks away. A chemical in the airplanes? Yeah, he goes, oh, it's chemical from the airplanes. And the first thing, <laughs> I couldn't control myself. The first thing I do is I just go, okay. And I look at the guy next to me. We like look at each other. Yep. And he just keeps going. It's it's so interesting how, many, how much. He's one of those guys that's just like so caught up in conspiracy theories. He's like mixing up COVID conspiracies with 9-11 conspiracies. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's COVID all one conspiracy. Can't beams. <laughs> COVID can't. I mean, that's just fact. Yep. Science. <laughs> Science. It's also 5G. Have you heard that one? Yeah, I've heard that. It's 5G. Like, didn't, uh people had to make public announcements like guys this isn't actually 5g can't cause this like right was it was it the world health organization that had like a public broadcast of like here's what people are saying and uh these theories are kind of dumb yeah i think uh yeah world health organization i think has done some of that stuff there's a lot of it that's another thing that 
this is really exposed just like everyone getting their news from different sources and just like what large amounts of people will believe if it's like you know retweeted or supported by like kind of one influential group or person or something right that's crazy man in a time i know it's like chill now but in the time when it was like we might all actually die that people would try to take a side in a political matter i know yeah if that's like i think i can't remember who said that but it was like united states is, might be the only country that could make wearing a mask a political decision <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and not like a, hey, we should all like protect each other kind of yeah. thing. Some people are like. Well, it's also, <laughs> it's also like, um, like political doubt that like racism is bad. Like that's like a, that's a political opinion now. And it's just, I mean, what? Well, obviously, like there's always been racist, but it's just like really out there right now. Right. I'm just like, what, what an insane world. That, that one's always kept on the shelf. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> like it, like, we're all like, oh, you know what? It's fine. Like, racism is bad. And there's one guy in the back who's just like, yeah, but like, you know, what? We'll leave that on the, we'll leave that on the back burner. We'll leave that in the main yeah. pile. <laughs> yeah, I was, I mean, it's all over social media. I've had to like kind of cut back on social media just because it makes me so upset, you know, seeing some, some people's responses to all this. Oh, yeah. How, how much did you cut out? Um, I deleted Twitter, which I don't go on Twitter much anyways. Yeah. I kind of, uh, like I deleted it for a while, then I got it again recently and I've been using it more and more. And then this happened and that's kind of like the main place, I guess, where I see a lot of stuff, but right. it's on Instagram too. And I always use Instagram. So um, yeah, oh, is Instagram your, your main, your platform of choice? Definitely. Yeah. Cool. I probably use it too much uh just for it's just like the i i put a timer on my phone that like locks me out after like 20 minutes a day or something or sometimes yeah, i'll yeah. do longer sometimes i'll do shorter um but there'll be times when i'm just like uh like just like a dull moment or something where you just like instinctively take out your phone and i just like i'll click on the instagram logo even though it's all grayed out like just out of habit and i'm like wait I don't, I don't have any more time today, but it's just like instinct. That's just kind of like where my thumb goes, which is kind of scary in a way. But <laughs> um, Yeah, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried the restriction thing so many times, too. Mm -hmm. um, Apple has the like you, it. It's just a, I don't know how it works on Android. You're on Android, right? I am. Yeah, I don't know how it works on Android, but Apple straight up just puts a little like little icon and it's like you've used your. You, you've used all your time for this app, and then you could just say, your choices are okay, which just closes the app, or you could just hit ignore limit, like the button mm -hmm. under it, and it'll just, you could pretty, basically just open it back up again. Yeah, yeah, I just, there's just a button that's like, learn more, you click on that, and you're directly at the point where you can just add more time, so, I mean, it works, I guess, a little bit, it's, yeah. Because it's like those times like that where it's just like I'm subconsciously doing it because I'm bored or something. Then I'll like click on it and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't actually like need to check this right now. So it helps right, with that. Yeah. But like if I really want to check it, I can check it. <laughs> so sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll even delete it off my phone I'll, for a couple days or something. Yeah. But it always I've, comes back. <laughs> I've tried deleting YouTube off my phone so many times. I don't think I can delete YouTube off my phone. Oh, you actually like you actually can. like it literally doesn't let me yeah <laughs> yeah i have a google phone so that makes sense uh we need to hone in on you at all times yeah yeah i think the most i made it without youtube is like probably two days but yeah youtube's just, probably my main thing too actually just like, like instagram is like instagram is like that thing i'll check uh like just little bits and pieces, but as far as like actual time on a platform, definitely YouTube is has the strongest hold on my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's different like aspects to YouTube. There's different like percentages of investment or something. Like you can have just a podcast in the background, or you could be like fully like that's true engrossed in yeah. a video. I think there's different use cases for how addicting it is, but it still is very addicting yeah um i think getting training myself to not listen to music 
while working out was, I think, one of the harder things I've had to do. <laughs> and it seems Wait, like... Uh, you kind of cut out. You said you were training yourself to not listen to music when you work out? Yeah. I, for the longest time, I would just, I would blast tunes. And the tunes would, like, yep. get me hyped. But then I heard, uh, I heard this guy on a podcast, like, David Goggins. He's the, he's the insane, like, Navy SEAL dude. Yeah. Who, like, oh, yeah, we talked about this. He told me about him. Yeah. Yeah, he's basically like, you know, that's, that's cheating, right? Like, because you're, you're, you're not going to get all the benefits of exercise. Like, one of the main things is if you wake up at 5 a.m., and you, you force yourself to work out without music that doubles down to like the mental, like your mental training, like getting right. yourself, getting yourself pumped. I think the, the cool analogy was like, you know, if someone like, if someone on the street just like socks you in the face, you're not gonna have time to like pump yourself up, like put in some tunes in. You're just going to be at, you're going to have to like be able to like flip a switch. Yeah. To throw yeah, down. That makes sense. And that's kind of like what training without music is in a way yeah i guess i i usually listen to music but lately um i've been going on runs without it just uh like i, I did it when like things were on strict lockdown and like i wasn't going anywhere i would just right. kind of run around and just like enjoy being outside yeah and i did cross country in high school and i remember like thinking about it now is probably kind of the same school of thought my coach wouldn't let us listen to music while we ran in practice because obviously you can't like have earbuds in during the cross country meets. So, right. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Dang, cross country? How, what's the farthest you've ran? Um, like without walking at all? Yeah, I guess. Um, well, we ran 5Ks in cross country, nice. and I don't think I've ever ran longer than that without walking. Like there were practices where we ran longer than that, but we would have like breaks. Yeah. But our total would be longer. But yeah, I don't think I've ever ran longer than a 5K without stopping. I'm not really a distance runner. I kind of just did it to stay in shape, and hang out with friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty good reason. I'm so bummed we couldn't do the 5K, man. I know. Dude, I'm so bummed. Like, I was on the committee trying to, like, put on this 5K, and it was kind of, it was kind of a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, not really. Like, I wasn't, like, the leader of the committee or, like, the person who did the most work. Um but just like everyone collectively trying to organize it. Um, Cause that's been, we've been trying to do that since I think last spring we were going to try to have it or maybe it was just the fall. I don't know, but yeah, I was pretty upset that didn't happen too. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was really ready to go. I was, dude, you were going to win it. I could tell <laughs> <laughs> I was training for it. I'm not even joking though. I was going yeah. so hard. I don't know. It was that same podcast, dude. It woke up something within me. If you haven't seen it, like this podcast about this dude who was like 300 pounds and literally while he was like 250 pounds or something, ran 100 miles and oh, yeah. discovered that he was immortal. <laughs> Wait, this like, is the same guy? This is uh, Goggins? Yeah. He was basically like, he had to lose a bunch of weight and then there was a point where he wanted to do like a certain ultra marathon and the guy was like, I'm not going to let you into my race unless you can run a hundred miles in 24 hours. And he was like, he's still super big, but he was like, nah, I got to do it. And he like, whoa, broke, he like broke his legs. And like, oh my God. it was like bleeding and stuff basically by the time he was done, but he finished it. And that's that, like, that's, <laughs> that's like superhuman. I don't know if I could, I mean, dude, listen to the podcast sure. because he, he he talks about that, how people are like, there's no way. And he's like, it's all, the majority of it is in your head. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm sure physically, if I was in like a life or death situation and I had to like run that, like if I'm running from something, I'm sure like my body could take it, but just doing it to get into a race, I don't think I'm mentally strong enough for that. Right. Like that amazes me. Dude, it, it blew my mind too, man. When I, even when I started running, cause I mean, I was a big dude. I could, I never could really run. I, my mile in high school was always like 16 minutes, but oh, yeah. <laughs> I started when I started training for that 5k dude, I was just mm -hmm. every day and this helped with everything. I would just surprise myself every day with how far I could go. I would just like, oh, yeah. be like, Oh my God, how did I do that? And I would just do it every day. 
And then one Wait, day. So what's what's the longest like you've run then without stopping? The longest I've run was like uh well it was just it was three and a half miles but okay that day because i was i was supposed to run three that day and i was a little nervous but i was like i i gotta do this and i didn't have any music in either and i i think i did it in the gym so it was kind of just running in that small circle but i remember hitting the three mile mark and just being like i am a god because three miles was just so like not possible to me for so much of my life it was like there's no way I hadn't stopped yet, and I was like, I gotta keep going. And I went to three and a half, and I was like, oh my god. Whoa. And that stuff just like... On that like, little track, just running in the circles? Yep. Damn. <laughs> I counted I counted the laps I was doing. Yeah, how many laps was that? <sighs> I don't... <laughs> uh, okay, so it's an eight, eighth it like... of... It's an eighth of a mile track. <laughs> so oh, wow. Was... I thought it was a fourth of a mile. <laughs> no. So, that's a lot of laps. Yeah, I counted... Th- uh... Eight... 16 16 26 or 28 is what i ran dang yeah that's awesome man i i don't think i can run that far anymore once you once you get a momentum going it's just like i don't know and then i lost it all when the covid thing happened i lost all of it now i'm very oh, upset yeah. but i'm start i i'm starting over yeah do you do you just run outside now yeah, yeah. when I actually go running, running, I do, like, outside. Sometimes I'll do, like, treadmill or elliptical stuff, but on, obviously you can't do that right now. Mm-hmm. But when I, first, when I first came back from spring break, I was still in it, and I was doing, uh, I was doing Murphs on the, on the playground by the YMCA. That's right. Yeah, you told me about the Murphs. Oh, it's, <laughs> did, yeah. you, did you get the vest? No, I didn't. Because uh. I, I still, doing a, a Murph without a vest is still, like, pretty hard for me. Oh yeah, definitely. And it like tears up your body. I don't know if it, how healthy it is, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, probably more healthy than not doing anything. I guess though. That's true. And it's just all. I mean, just the mental thing. Like if I could, I wish I. I wish I had that now. Mm-hmm. But just gotta start over. Starting over. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't do too intense of like workouts. Like I'll try to run a little bit every day. And that's like my, um, like kind of my thing, I guess that I hold myself to is yeah. kind of consistency more than just, you know, going all out on everyone. Right. It's like being consistent is hard enough. Like if I've done some sort of like physical activity every day right now, I'll consider that a success. Yeah. I remember when we were like, I think it was sophomore year, you were, you were hitting the gym pretty hard. My, um, yeah, sophomore year, I did pretty good. Freshman year, second semester freshman year, um, into the summer, I went to the gym 160 days in a row. That's right. Okay. (laughs) It was freshman year because I remember you were counting. Yeah. You were like, this is my 87th day. (laughs) Fuck your plans. That was, that was the, that was the best, man. That's the kind of commitment I want. Cause you were like, people were like, oh, Ben, come, come hang out with us. And you're like, day 87, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. I was yeah. Oh the man. The sad thing is though, I I like lost all the progress I made once I stopped doing it cuz I was eating too much fast food. <laughs> yeah, but I feel I also feel like that's, you know. You're everyone's due for a setback every now and then. Yeah. It's at, it's about the it's about the comeback. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I guess that's that's why I just try to be consistent now. I guess instead of I should keep track of my days though. Again, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure like if I really tried, like like you said, if you put your mind to it, I'm sure I could beat that. Like, right. I'm sure I could go more than 160 days. Yeah, maybe I'll try to do that. It's a it's a really good like the way I I, I thought of it when I was doing like running and stuff is like once you. You think about like how far you can go or how many days you can do- go or how many times you can do X thing. You can already do that X number of times. Like you have proven to yourself that you can do it a certain number of times, right? True. So y- you are yeah. capable of that. And then once you get to that, every single thing after that is a is a record for yourself. Every single thing you do after that, like the first time I ran three miles, 
I was like, every step I take after this is a new record for me. <laughs> every step That's I a good take, way to look at it, yeah, yeah. Every step I take is a new, is like the first time I have ran this distance, and that kind of like carries you. Yeah. Yeah, figuring out like, I guess. Would you consider that kind of in the same category of being like mentally strong is like mentally just trying to like be an optimist like that and see those little things to give yourself just like a little bit of a like oh, an yeah. ego boost and stuff? Yeah. yeah. That uh what's the what's the saying? Like you um Ah, I totally forgot. Like it's like you they give you inches and you take a mile or whatever. Yeah. Like you just gotta you gotta push yourself through it. And then you surprise yourself. And then that's when you that's when you gain that is the purest form of confidence you can gain is like, yeah, wait a minute. I, my body and my thoughts were telling me that, no, this was not a thing that I could possibly do. This was something that I couldn't achieve, but then I did achieve it. And I like that voice in my head doesn't know what the fuck it's talking about. And maybe it should step out of the way for a sec. Cause I'm about to, I'm about to crush this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, meeting meeting like those goals that you set for yourself is I think really good for confidence boosting and then just like you keep going and you keep like riding that wave and setting more and like you keep keep meeting those those goals and like I feel like the the parts of my life where I've been like most confident or most happy have been kind of like where I've like really strung those together like meeting lots of I guess I guess smaller goals is usually what I go for like lots of smaller goals lots of small steps yeah, and man. then and then yeah sometimes i'll just like wake up and i'll be like or i guess i see it a lot in my work where i'll like make something and you know it doesn't really like look that good compared to the last thing i've made but then you know like you'll look at something you made a year ago or even just like think about what you're doing a year ago and you're like wow like i've come so far yeah <laughs> yeah for sure dude yeah man was it junior year? I remember well, it was junior year and sophomore year. Those times, man, you were locked in you were locked in that room. You were like, it's been doing all right. You were like grinding away on some some music videos oh, yeah. and like doing your doing your uh doing your capstone. Oh wait, uh when was this? Junior year? Like in St. James? There yeah, there were two instances when uh mm-hmm. the first semester of you of senior year in in the fall, so fall of 2019. Yeah, I got that right. Fall of 2019, you were just going at it. And there was a point in junior year where I don't think I ever, I started just not seeing you. And I was like, is Ben, do, <laughs> is ben doing okay? Well, okay, so there was a time in February when I, I, I usually try to like be healthy and like set limits for how much I work. But I actually like made myself sick because I worked too much. I remember this. Yeah. Um, and that was on the avocado music video. Yeah, man. Because I, yeah, that semester was pretty <laughs> rough as far as like a workload because I was doing those podcast animations. And yeah. I was also in charge of the bumper for Fuse, which was a lot of pressure and like representing the whole department. And then this kind of like music video thing came up. And I've been like, you're like, when I was out in LA, I would be. I had a music internship and like I was meeting all these musicians and I'd always be like, yeah, I want to animate a music video sometime. And um, like a connection of a connection ended up reaching out for that avocado video. And like, so of course I said, yes, even though like the pay wasn't great, um, but it was still a music video, but yeah. I was terrible at managing my time because I was like working on so much other stuff. So then uh, it got to be like two weeks to go. And I'm <laughs> oh, like, no. shit. <laughs> I had so much to do on that video and it you know it became you know it is what it is um but yeah I definitely overworked like I I had like those two weeks I like worked so hard for like the first week that was probably like the time you didn't see me then I got kind of sick for like three days yeah and just kind of like laid there and I was burnt out and then like went hard again for like the last four days before they needed it done by and yeah, I think that semester was probably the time where I worked the hardest. If you think about like work as working hard is like totally burning myself out. <laughs> yeah, I remember you were there. There was some point when I was like, "Ben, are you all right?" And you were like, "Do you want to get <laughs> you want to get pizza?" <laughs> and we went to get pizza, and you're just like, you were just so drained. 
Yeah. Over at uh, what that was that? What was that place me. called? Yeah, I remember you being like that too, though. Sometimes. Oh, I dude, think. all the time, man. Yeah. I was. Well, uh, no, I feel like. I, I mean, I feel like this year you've, uh, or like the past senior year, like you've been talking about all your running and stuff. Yeah. It seemed like you were a bit more balanced. I got uh, it. I remember, all, like, man. you were grinding hard for most of. I mean, for all of college, but like at like a level that would have burned most people out, I feel like for pretty much all of college. Oh, and yeah. Freshman year. Freshman I, year, yeah. Spring of freshman year specifically, I took a course load that I should not have taken. And it just I remember went, that. It just went onto a path of I'll probably talk about it with Jake on. Yeah. Uh, when we when we record that one. But that yeah, that was a path of just self-destruction and you know that could have easily I, like i just look at that and that could have easily just been like the 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 time that people like i don't know i don't know what the word is where people just like dipped out right because yeah i <laughs> i was not cool like i've talked about this with jake i was not cool i was at i would just get so angry about everything because i was so unhappy and yeah, no, I remember that. That was um, that was the same semester you like cut out caffeine, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And then I <laughs> cut it back in, and immediately, my heart was about to burst out of my chest. That's right. And that was scary. Uh, yeah. Oh man, just the fact that's that's when I knew that everyone that that whole group was just like legendary friends, like Jake and you guys. You mean the whole us? Fact, yeah. yeah, the whole fact of like all that shit that I went through and then Jake just like I remember just Jake asking like, hey, do you want to do you want to be roommates again next year? And I was like, you want to you want to be roommates with me again? And he was like, yeah, man. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. This is like, <laughs> then I'm, 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 being, I'm being for real, though. This is like this is the group of friends, man. This is a sitcom group of friends right here. Yeah, no, we were good friends. I I definitely try to not take that for granted. I feel like a lot of people, um, maybe like don't have that strong of friendships all the time, or like you know maybe sometimes you do, and then you like leave uh, your high school, and then don't really have that same group in college or something. I feel like I I've been pretty lucky to have pretty good friends for most of my life, and like my high school friends were good, but then I went to college and just got like so close with everyone, and like. I don't know. College friendships were on a different level for me of just like, like you said, like just kind of like being there for each other and yeah, man, just like really, yeah, just really like getting to know people. I mean, just like living with, you know, we all lived within, I mean, those were tiny rooms, like <laughs> 20 feet of each other. We yeah. lived there for sophomore year. Um, yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. It totally, it totally changed my perspective on a lot of things. I think in a lot of aspects, like being in that group just like made me a different person for the for the better. Yeah, totally. All right, man. We are hitting we are hitting the sixty minute mark. Oh so, wow. Is yeah, that man. are you cutting us off or uh Well I if, is that I mean if you want to keep going we can. Oh, it's up to you. I mean it's your show. I was gonna ask uh you like kinda like where you're you're up to now. Like I haven't really heard oh, you sure. said you were working. Uh, um, yeah, well, it's, a. Uh, I got an internship with, um, with Deep Silver Volition. Oh, nice. I've just been doing that remotely, working on, uh, uh, the next Saints Row project. That's, that's pretty, great. That's pretty much all I've been doing. Yeah, it's been so, it's been awesome, man. I think the, the coolest thing about game design that I'm learning is that you, game design's only been around for, like, I don't know, maybe like at the most like 30 years, maybe 40 years or something like that. Yeah. Um, In terms of like thing to study. So a lot of the reference for game design is just general, is just knowledge. And the fact that like I, I'm with level design right now and I'm looking at references for like how, how am I supposed to do level design? Cause it's something I've never done before. And a lot of the stuff that I was referred to was like architecture like straight up just drafting 
like architecture, how how spaces are set up. And I think it's so cool that for it's interesting a job where I get to make digital experiences, I get to also just learn on top of that. Like I'm looking at how like space is based on the era and like emotions that spaces evoke, and it's just it's just really cool and really rewarding to still be able to go outside what like making a game is to kind of figure yeah. that stuff out. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's... Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying about like trying to dip my toes into different areas like in college and stuff and kind of like gain inspiration from you know different things like drawing and making keyframes isn't all there is to animation and stuff like in the same same kind of way. Like animation's been around longer than games, but Oh yeah. I definitely see what you mean. Oh dude, I was I was looking at uh old school stop motion. Oh yeah. From back in the day. That shit I you know, when I was a kid I hated stop motion. <laughs> like I've totally flipped around on it. I'm like, this shit looks so fake. Yeah, I hate it, but once you get into that perspective of like how it's actually made and everything, you just appreciate it so much more and you're like, That's so cool. Stop That's, motion is yeah. so neat. Learning how things are made is uh yeah. A huge step in like appreciating something I feel like I mean like I didn't really go into animation because I love cartoons or anything I feel like I love animation a lot more now than I did like freshman year oh yeah and I hope I hope that other people are like that too because I know some people just like come into animation or game design you know it's one of the great things about the department is that everyone's just like so passionate about it and you know, because if you're not, you're not, you're not going to make it, you know, you're not going to make it through like those points that you were talking about, like that dip where you weren't really like enjoying it. Um, yeah. You got to have that drive. Yeah, for sure, man. But yep. yeah, I think, yeah, getting an understanding of how things are made, this gives you a huge appreciation for it. And then like you realize kind of everything's like that, you know, like everything everything that's made by people there's people that like specialize it in it and spend their whole lives learning about it and getting better at it yeah man you ever you ever think that i i know i know you're passionate about animation and I'm, i've seen you work on it and you're really good do you ever see a time where you might just like stop doing it yeah, I'm I'm open to that possibility, I think. Um I kind of feel like I kind of feel like in a sense um I'll never retire cuz I always like want to make art and stuff and hopefully by the time I'd be like at a retiring age I would be good enough to like do something like I kind of picture myself, I guess, getting it more into music at some point. Like, I yeah. guess at some point in my life, I'd like to make music my main focus. That's kind of a goal I have. Oh, sweet. Um, not like a solid plan for. Um, but as far as stopping animation, uh, I don't know. Like right now, it's definitely like my most marketable skill, I think. And I do love it. Um, but, you know, I've only really been doing it for four years. You know, maybe I will get tired of it and I will want to fall back and do music or maybe I'll find something new um, that'll, yeah, just kind of like change, I guess, where my passions are. Right, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about like long-term plans a lot lately and how the fact that I don't have any, um, <laughs> but I have like ideas and I guess sort of a, a path I want to follow. But I guess, um, yeah, I could see myself focusing on something else to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 totally a legit answer. I was just curious because I I've, I've just been thinking about that as I'm like kind of was talking about earlier with the and you were talking about like pools of knowledge you have to grab from outside of your your own kind of zone when you pull from knowledge that's outside of your base you can start to find like stuff outside that's kind of yeah. like neat and you know life is so short that <laughs> yeah not trying to dive into other stuff is kind of 
kind of insane to me. Even though my my goal for the longest time was to like open a, a game studio, like I I mm-hmm. think sometimes like I might just want to just walk away and try something else. Like, oh I, yeah, you I'm, don't think you're gonna do that anymore? Oh no, I'm gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> no, I've always wanted to do that. I'm just saying that the the day might come where like I, you know, where I'm like I think I've spent enough time in this. I think I've achieved like the the best game designer I could be has been achieved by me. Like yeah. I can't really excel that much more and maybe you know, I could go back to I sometimes I feel like the key to youth is just sucking. Like I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say that I feel like being young is just being yeah. te- like terrible at something, and like getting better <laughs> no, at I get it. You and once you're once you're a master at something, sometimes it's it's cooler to like just go back and be like, I don't really understand what I'm doing. Yeah, I felt that a lot making my senior film because I did my own music and like I've I've known how to like play guitar and compose music for a while. But as far as like recording and producing it, I definitely sucked <laughs> at the beginning. And it took me like all year to figure out how to do that one track for the film. Uh, so I definitely get what you mean, because that was it's uh, yeah, one of those times where I just like I finished it and I'm like, wow, I didn't didn't know I could do that. Kind of had right, a regret yeah. that I like didn't do it sooner. You know, <laughs> like I was like, wow, I could have been making music for years now. You know, but but you it fig- is what it is. You figured it out. Yeah. And it opens it opens so many more Ben timelines for yeah. what could potentially be like uh, I don't know, I can I can't really can I produce music? You say like maybe. Then it's like so mm-hmm. many doors of like Ben producing I don't really a hundred percent know what a music producer does. I'm imagining you're like snorting coke somewhere or something. But <laughs> those windows are open whatever they are, they're open for you. Whereas if you're like, uh, I don't mm, that's not really safe. Maybe I should hold off on that. Never again. Yeah. They're just gone. That those specific instances of you are just are just dead. Like alternate universes that have just been wiped from existence. Because yeah, you, you I think it's also it. it's also a little bit the opposite too, though. Because like definitely from that process, I learned like if I wasn't doing everything myself, I would I learned like what I would want to do myself and what I would definitely like want to give to someone else. And like what a music producer does, I probably I probably wouldn't want to be like a music producer, I guess. Well, right. Not not like as my like main thing, but what I really like is like composing music. That's kind of my my favorite part, I guess. And mixing it together, and yeah, just like adding layers on and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think a music producer is. I, I always want to hear that term. I think of a lot of like electronic music now um and music producers are kind of like sound designers in a way and right um kind of that that seems to be the more modern definition of a producer i guess um so i kind of learned that i wouldn't i don't think i would want to be a music producer even though like i have the basic knowledge now that i could produce my own music if i'm doing everything by myself if that makes sense right yeah no that that totally makes sense Wow, it's, yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah, well, congrats on Volition. That sounds great. I wasn't sure uh, if you got that, but that's awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I got, it was... I, I'm pretty lucky that I got that, but it's been... Yeah. It's been super fun. Everyone there is just a memester. <laughs> yeah, like it I, sucks that you don't get to like actually be there, though, because, right, you're working remote. For now. But there are, yeah. there are talks of potentially moving everyone back in there in the upcoming weeks. There, are, I mean, there are already people in the yeah. studio right now, and they're they're slowly integrating just the the rest of the staff. The question is if and when the interns will also be allowed to party with the big boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> do you want to? Like, do you want to? stay remote or do you want to go like live in champagne and work in person i want to work oh, dude you've been to champagne i have yeah champagne's so nice i would love to be yeah, there i like it a lot <laughs> uh, the, uh, it, yeah it's super great I, I the only time i went there is when i did the interview for the first time um in yeah. person and yeah it was just 
I mean, we just went down the street and there was just so many just like local places. And I don't, I don't really get that mm-hmm. where I'm where I'm from. Peoria a little bit, but not where I'm at. So that just... yeah, I went there. I've been in Champaign one time, and it was for a concert, and it was on U of I's campus. And just like being on a campus of a school that big is pretty crazy. Um, but like you said, just like the local businesses and stuff. Like me and my girlfriend were there, and we're like we're feeling sushi, and there were three sushi places within a block of where we were, and I'm like. This is great. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's so nice, right? It's just like, yeah, that's really the only area I've been in, but it was just a lot of like cool looking restaurants and lots of kind of like, I guess, diverse, diversity, diverse communities. And um, yeah, it seemed like a cool place to be. So I hope you get to go there. Would be nice. But if it doesn't happen, you know, kind of what you said earlier, I'm at home. I don't pay rent. Yeah. So that's that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice, but I don't think I'll stay too long cuz I don't know. I don't want to just like get complacent with that, you Right. Know? Yeah. It's important to like to leave the nest as they say. Yeah, just kind of nice for for the short term just hanging out. Yeah. I'm hyped to have my own place. Yeah. I think I've ever, I haven't really lived by myself before. Yeah, I guess I have once. Um, after freshman year, I got that internship in Wichita. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I lived down there by myself. That was like when I was finishing up that 160 days, but then I broke it because I had too much fast food down there because I didn't want to like cook <laughs> for myself and grocery shop for one and stuff um didn't really know how to do that but yeah i lived alone there just for like that one summer you not were you not a fan of it it was fine it was um i yeah i i actually was fine because i i just went to work you know i worked like a regular person hours and then went home at night had dinner and basically just watched netflix uh, or played video games and because i didn't really know too many people in the area usually i made like some friends down there and i would try to do like a something social like every weekend you know just so i'm not either just working or by myself uh which was nice and that was enough i'm more of an introvert so that was enough socializing just like once or twice a week outside of work uh was enough and as far as like having the place to myself that was really nice because i was actually supposed to have a roommate i like paid the price like the cheaper price to have a roommate uh, yeah. but they never showed up, so I had my own place. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Uh, I think we should get back to wrapping this up. Yeah, that's but, fine. But, um, you know, we've been talking about a lot about, uh, you know, the dark times we've we've been in, but also some of the highs. Do you yeah. have a specific favorite memory from the past four years specific favorite memory um hmm. i guess for me generally i do love and kind of the reason that inspired me to like start writing this sitcom that's based on just our lives is just the the memory of just sitting in that <laughs> in that dopey freaking lobby in the Harper <laughs> One dorms. Yeah. Something about yeah. it is just already so nostalgic to me. Yeah, we were like the lobby group. Yeah, we were the lobby group. We we're the lobbyists. Yeah. I think um Hmm. I can't pinpoint it to a moment. Um, but I guess yeah, I don't know. There's lots of good memories, but I feel like the Jello party was uh oh um, right. A pretty special night for me. That was, was awesome. Yeah, so I finished the music video, which still isn't released. Um it's coming out July 1st, though. 
Um, oh, dude. But, yeah. Yeah. So just like showing that to like, just like a, you know, my close friends and everyone really liked it and just had a really good time that night. And I really liked, you know, we ended up, we had that such a nice house and we used it sometimes, but we, I feel like we didn't take advantage of it enough. But that night it was, it was nice to have like people over and I tried to like, you know, get everyone involved by like, Hey, everyone make your own jello shot and like have a competition. And when people like, when everyone's like invested in like the party setup, I think everyone like expects something good out of the night. And I thought, I thought it was a great night. And I just, yeah, I felt like I was like surrounded by the people that I cared about most and just showing off at the time, what was my best work and just having a good time. And yeah, that's probably one of my favorite memories. I don't know if it's my my top one. I would have to think about some other good ones too, but I'll say that one. <laughs> yeah, man. That was a great memory. A lot of good times and so many jello shots. Uh, like yeah, I've it's like two hundred and six or something. <laughs> two hundred and six jello shots. We just had that, that was, in our <laughs> That was uh consumed. That was not made. There was more than that made. <laughs> my God. Yeah, I remember yeah. I remember Eddie wasn't even there. Eddie had to go do something. And he That's right. Yeah. I mean there there was a few people that couldn't make it. Just like, you know, not not everyone was there, but still. But the best part about Eddie, like he came back and opened our fridge and was just like, <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> it's just one door was just nothing but jello shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. Well, all right, Ben. Thanks Very so much. college thing to do. Yeah. So so yeah. much, man. That was like, that's premium sitcom material right there. Yeah. All right, cool, I man. Guess that memory will have to replace the the lost fuse with booze 2020 that we never had. Oh, yeah. That could still happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we're going back. You're going back in December, right? I hope so. If I'm here, um, I, um, I might move to Ireland if that's um if that's still something like they have a thing where you can go do like a work thing there a work visa for a year and if like travel kind of opens up a little bit more i still want to do that and i might be gone in december but if i'm here then yeah definitely i would go back because there's lots of people i want to see you know <laughs> i didn't really get to say goodbye to and stuff yeah because everyone left right so so quickly We'll have to open a few f- fuse with booze, like speakeasy. It's like an underground <laughs> yeah. bar somewhere. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming on so much, man. Um. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah. It was just, I mean, good to talk to you just in general. Yeah, I'm for glad sure. Here you're doing well. That's the whole reason I'm starting this. Like, I just want, I think this would be a cool thing if the group could just not only come here and chill with me, but see what everyone else is doing. Just yeah. by like listening to this and see where everyone's at, you know. Yeah. And I'm gathering data to uh, you know, write the sitcom. Uh do you want <laughs> You're gonna do that? It's uh still still in the works. Dude, my pi- the pilot's being written, man. Yeah. The script is being That's written. Awesome. It's it's so hard. It's so hard to write a pilot. I've shat on yeah. so many T V shows that I feel bad for now. I'm like, this pilot's <laughs> awful. It's like But your your task is literally Pitch the entire show in a half hour while also introducing all of the characters and not making them yeah. feel like one note. And it's well, like how many characters are you introducing? Like who? I guess you don't need to go into too much, but I'd be curious to hear like off the air, like who's, uh, um, like who the main characters are and stuff. Like, oh, are yeah. you the main character? Is it from your perspective? Um. Yeah. Well, I feel like early on. The show has to start from someone's perspective, and I don't know yeah. who that's going to be. I think it might be, it might be Jake, but I was also thinking that because you had a you had a staggered entrance into our group, kind of you were a little bit after we all kind of met, so yeah. it might be an easy template to introduce you as a newcomer into this group that was recently formed. So yeah. that the the audience can somewhat identify with you kind of jumping in to this group to meet this group of people like you would. Oh, OK, the audience would like see it through your eyes and would with you jump into this group of, of freaking weirdos. 
that's a good idea and that's i guess how a lot of shows start yeah um i'm yeah, thinking it's... of sitcoms like um doesn't friends start that way like one of them is um it's rachel right have you seen friends yes i have yeah rachel rachel's the new person i'm pretty sure yeah and they all kind of yeah. I, I That's really, a good way to do it. I'd really like to do the origin story, but I can't think of, like, having us all meet unless it was, like, a feature film. Like, an hour and a half script of the oh, the, the yeah. Avengers assembling, you know? I, yeah, I feel like, um, if you're thinking, like, long-term for this, that can be, like, an episode later when you're, like, invested in the characters, you know? And then it's, like, a flashback episode. Yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to... We've been debating. I, I kind of want to start the show, like kind of even more later like sophomore year was i'm thinking like where the show would begin and then we'd flash back to freshman yeah. year to fill in gaps but you know still kind of figuring that stuff out i just really want to write down all our funny bits all yeah. the crazy shit we did we didn't even go into that time we broke into a frat party <laughs> that was like that stuff needs to be those stories need to be told and they will be and it's gonna be yeah. hilarious my goal my goal for this sitcom, I want to write an episode and get feedback for everyone before December. And then if people are down for it, to bring a copy of the episode and to do a table read where everyone is, like everyone does a table read of their characters and we go through a whole episode. I think that'd be so fun. Yeah. That'd oh, that would be great, actually. That would be so funny. You, you're, like, <laughs> you're reading a script and playing yourself just in a show. <laughs> Yeah, and then we could yeah we could really feel the vibe of what the show is, but that's all you know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, it's it's very exciting. I, I love. Sitcoms. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. You're actually doing something with it, and yeah, I'd love to see that. <laughs> like, I hope it turns out to to be something. And I'll have something. I can't promise it'll yeah. be good, but I'll have something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can assure that. Yeah, if it's something, you know, you can always always revise it and make it good, you know, as long as you're making something. Right. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Do you, uh is there anything you want to plug? Where where can we find you? Um all right, well, I briefly mentioned the music video that I made is coming out on July 1st. Um and so yeah, I made that last summer, but it's coming out now because they waited a long time but that'll be on probably the youtube page of a band called ships have sailed um and their song low comes out um the song comes out on june 17th so pretty soon and then the video comes out july 1st and then for me personally um yeah you can just put i guess links to my stuff like the yeah, platforms sure. i'm on the most are instagram and youtube i guess those are the two that i'm gonna try to invest in more and oh, then yeah. i have my adobe portfolio website that's uh probably going to exist for maybe a week or two more because i'm <laughs> making like a a real website now so hell yeah i'll get you that link when it's ready yeah if that's done it'll be here i'll probably update it once that video comes out assuming that this comes this video comes out before then yeah other than that i guess watch my senior film demiurge that's hell on yeah YouTube, or my vimeo if you yeah, either yeah, one. Yeah, I still need to watch that. I'm about to have a viewing party, though. Once my oh, you haven't seen back. it yet? <laughs> I haven't. I'm, like, lining them up, man. I'm so hyped for yeah. these senior films. I sent you the link, right, to watch them all in order? Or, there's no order, but all together. You did send me the link, yeah. I just need to, yeah. I just need to sit down, get the popcorn going, have a, yeah. have a mini fuse. Yeah, that's what my family did. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks again, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>